I've just filled my 20th comic box. I guesstimate that means I have about 5,000 comic books now here in August of 2023. For the occasion, I will take a look at the very first comic book I ever got and a little bit of the history behind it. Western Publishing was an American company that made books, comic books, coloring books, puzzles, board games, and more from 1907 to 2001. Dell Publishing made Dell Comics starting in 1929 and partnered with Western Publishing in 1938 to make comic books until 1962. That's when Western broke off on its own and published under the banner Gold Key Comics until 1980 taking most of Dell's comic creators with them and causing Dell to stop publishing comics by 1974. In 1979, the toy company Mattel bought Western Publishing, changed their comics branch from the name Gold Key to Whitman Comics and stopped selling comics on newsstands, relocating them to department, toy, and grocery stores. In 1980, Whitman comics were only sold bagged in three packs, but starting in January of 1981, they were sold individually again until Mattel sold the company to a real estate investor in December of 1983, and he closed its comic division in 1984. The very first issue of the Pink Panther comic book from Whitman Comics that was not sold in a bagged three pack was issue 78 from January of 1981, and that's when I got it, my first comic book ever. The Pink Panther comes from the 1963 Peter Sellers movie about Inspector Clouseau and its animated opening sequence and accompanying theme song. That was the first job created by DePatty Frailing Enterprises, a company started by two former Warner Brothers animators when Warner Brothers closed their animation studio. And its popularity led to DePatty Frailing continuing to create Pink Panther cartoons from 1964 through 1980. The Pink Panther comic book began in April of 1971 from Gold Key Comics. It changed to Whitman Comics in July of 1980 with issue 74 and ended with issue 87 in 1983. They were written and drawn by an uncredited Warren Tufts, who would die in 1982 from crashing a plane he designed and flew. My issue 78 was the first issue published after the cartoon ceased production and where the cover price was raised from 40 to 50 cents. Now let's take a look. You can see it's not in that great a condition. I clearly read this a million times while growing up. Okay, so we have the Pink Panther picking posies. He needs to get back to his pink car. He's in a panic. What ho, a clearing ahead, replete with castle. So, this, like, 1950s-era businessman lives in this medieval European castle. Oh, and, uh, of course, he is a Dr. Frankenstein. Remember these? I always wanted one of these as a kid, but I never actually saw one in real life. And uh, the one I wanted was Underdog. Okay, so he hooks the Pink Panther up to the lightning rod, electrocutes him, and it brings the uh, monster to life. Of course. Hey, do it again. Oh, he's got several monsters. Greater Peril, Pink Pandemonium, and a third monster. This one's from the game Operation. See the nose? Erg Eep Gleep. Ah, but they're all nice monsters. Okay, the monsters become babysitters. All right, and he's got two more ready to go. All right, and he's got to get out of the forest. Never did find his pink car. Okay, this one is a Pink Panther in Pink Silence. He's out in traffic. He's not in his pink car. Ah, peace and solitude at the Silent Sage Ranch. Farewell, noisy city. And here he is, the Old West. Oh, so the little guy is the inspector. Okay. We don't even have a telephone. We send smoke signals. Carrying the picnic basket with his tail. It's clever. Uh-oh, looks like a rattlesnake. Ah, denim embroidered iron-on stayons. Hmm. So, like, on the knees of your torn-out corduroys? No, they got them on their shirts. A denim patch on your shirt? Okay. All right, back to the story. Not much quiet out here. Got the coyotes, got the, I don't know, the guy's radio. Got the rooster. What's this? I wanted one of these scissors, too. I think I wanted the uh, Woody Woodpecker. Nope, I remember now, I wanted Bugs Bunny because the scissors would have been like his ears. Okay, back to the ranch. Uh-oh, a shootout. Squirt guns. 
All right, and he goes to the North Pole. Okay, that is a lot of dialogue there. The end. Let's see, we got another story. These pages are hard to turn. Here we go, Pink Clock Doc. Now he is a uh, guy that fixes clocks and makes house calls to fix clocks. I wonder if that was an actual job you could have in 1981 when this came out. Well, in 1980 when they made this comic. I guess, I guess somebody has to go up there and fix these giant clocks. Someone is sabotaging the clock and it is a witch. They got ads for every single Whitman comic they put out. And it's all this Disney stuff. Well, there you go. Lots of cartoon characters. Oh, he stole her broom. Hey, it's like uh, the ending of Bewitched. Or the beginning. That's the end. Apache Arrowheads. Ooh. That's it. Oh, here we go. Nice ad. Look, Flaming Vader. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. The Bee Gees, Elvis, John Travolta, Kiss, each member of Kiss. Who are the, oh, the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> Beatlemania, the Beatles, the Bee Gees again. The Pink Panther. See ya.